Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Bhumika. Here is what I bring to you from the world of medicine. MIT study shows that two dose schedule may make HIV vaccine more effective. In a new study, the researchers have now found that they can achieve an immune response similar to multi-dose regimen with just two doses given one week apart. The first dose, which is much smaller, prepares the immune system to respond more powerfully to the second larger dose. This study, which was performed by bringing together computational modeling and experiments in mice, used an HIV envelope protein as the vaccine. A single dose version of this vaccine is now in clinical trials and the researchers hope to establish another study group that will receive the vaccine on a two-dose schedule. By bringing together the physical and life sciences, we shed light on some basic immunological questions that help develop this two-dose schedule to mimic the multiple-dose regimen, says Arup Chakraborty, the John M. Duke Institute Professor at MIT and a member of MIT's Institute for Medical Engineering and Science and the Reagan Institute of MIT, MGH and Harvard University. This approach may also generalize to vaccines for other diseases, Chakraborty notes. Chakraborty and Daryl Irvine, a former MIT professor for biological engineering and material science and engineering and members of the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research, who is now a professor of immunology and microbiology at the Scripps Research Institute, are the senior authors of the study, which appears in Science Immunology. The lead author of the paper are Sachin Bakchandani, PhD and Lirang Yang, PhD. One promising vaccine now in clinical trial consists of an HIV protein called an envelope trimmer along with a nanoparticle called SMNP. The nanoparticle developed by Irwin's lab acts as an adjuvant that helps recruit a stronger B-cell response to the vaccine. In clinical trials, this vaccine and other experimental vaccines have been given as just one dose. However, there is growing evidence that a series of doses is more effective at generating broadly neutralizing antibodies. The seven-dose regimen, the researchers believe, works well because it mimics what happens when the body is exposed to a virus. The immune system builds up a strong response as more viral proteins or antigens accumulate in the body. In the new study, the MIT team investigated how this response develops and explored whether they could achieve the same effect using a smaller number of vaccine doses. Giving seven doses just isn't feasible for mass vaccination, Bakchandani says. We wanted to identify some of these critical elements necessary for the success of this escalating dose and to explore whether that knowledge could allow us to reduce the number of doses. The researchers began by comparing the effects of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7 doses all given over a 12-day period. They initially found that while 3 or more doses generated strong antibody responses, 2 doses did not. However, by tweaking the dose intervals and ratios, the researchers discovered that given 20% of the vaccine in the first dose and 80% in the second dose, 7 days later achieved just as good a response as a 7-dose schedule. It was clear that understanding the mechanism behind this phenomena could be crucial for future clinical translation, Yang says. Even if the ideal dosing ratio and timing may differ for humans, the underlying mechanism principle will likely remain the same. Using a computational model, the researchers explored what was happening in each of these dosing scenarios. This work showed that when all of the vaccine is given as one dose, most of the antigen gets jobbed into fragments before it reaches the lymph node. Lymph nodes are where B cells become more activated to target a particular antigen within structures known as germinal centers. When only a tiny amount of the antigen reaches these germinal centers, B cells can't come up with a strong response against the antigen. However, a very small number of B cells do arise that produce antibodies targeting the intact antigen. So giving a small amount in the first dose does not waste much antigen but allows some B cell and antibodies to develop. If a second larger dose is given a week later, those antibodies bind to the antigen before it can be broken down and escorted into lymph nodes. This allows more B cells to be exposed to that antigen and eventually lead to a larger population of B cells that can target it. The early doses generate some small amount of antibody and that's enough to then bind to the vaccine of the later doses, protect it and target it to the lymph nodes. 
That's how we realize that we don't need to give seven doses. Bakchandani says a small initial dose will generate this antibody, and then when you give the larger dose, it can again be protected because that antibody will bind to it and traffic it to the lymph nodes. Those antigens may stay in the germinal centers for weeks or even longer, allowing more B cells to come in and be exposed to them, making it more likely that diverse type of antibodies will develop. The researchers also found that the two dose schedule induce a stronger T cell response. The first dose activates dendritic cells, which promotes inflammation and T cell activation. Then, when the second dose arrives, even more dendritic cells are stimulated, further boosting the T cell response. Overall, the two dose regimen resulted in a five fold improvement in the T cell response and a 60 fold improvement in the antibody response compared to a single vaccine dose. Reducing the escalating dose strategy down to two shots makes it much more practical for the clinical implementation. Further, a number of technologies are in development that could mimic the two dose exposure in a single shot, which could become ideal for mass vaccination campaigns, Irwin says. The researchers are now studying this vaccine strategy in a non human primate model. They are also working on specialized materials that can deliver the second dose over an extended period of time, which could further enhance the immune response. Thank you for watching Medical Dialogues. Stay tuned for more such updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe, and press the bell icon.